So a number of people who are privy to what's going on in the technology space have emailed me about how difficult it would be to make an image board on the Ethereum network, whether it's possible and just what I think about Ethereum in general. Uh, so let's first say what Ethereum actually is, because the website and the promotional materials do not really make it clear. Ethereum is a altcoin, a different version of Bitcoin, except it doesn't use Bitcoin Core. They rewrote their own version of Bitcoin Core, yet it's still an altcoin. It still is a blockchain where you can make transactions. That's all it is. Uh, it has a twist to it, though. Bitcoin has its own programming language that not a lot of people use, but it's called Bitcoin Script, and the language is just called Script with a capital S. It has a bunch of operations you can use. Every transaction uses those operations, except it's transparent to most users. You don't know what's going on. It uses, you know, op underscore check sig to make sure that the signature is valid, op underscore verify, things like that. There's also op underscore return. Uh, Multi-signature wallets use this, etc., etc. The Ethereum developers decided that script with a capital S it's too hard to use, I agree. And they thought that it would be a good idea if they built a altcoin with an easier to use programming language. That's what Ethereum is. So you can make contracts with their easier to use programming language on top of their altcoin. But fundamentally, everything that is possible with Ethereum is technically possible with Bitcoin as well. It will just probably cost more and it will be more difficult to implement. So with that out of the way, uh, Ethereum is being sold to a lot of people as things that it is not, though, which is what I'm going to go over now. Uh, the main idea that would come to mind when you have this network would be, oh, well, I'm going to make a gambling contract because, you know, it'll be provably fair and even better than provably fair, it won't be hosted on a server. It'll be hosted on the blockchain. Well, that's all well and good, but there's no good source of randomness. Now, Ethereum is being sold to people as an open system, but it's actually a closed system. Everything the network knows has to be from within the network. So the network cannot query information from outside. The network cannot ask uh, anything about what's going on outside the network. So here's a good example of that. Imagine that you um, wanted to make a contract, and if something happened, then you would get money back, and if it didn't happen, then the money would go to the operator of the casino. So the only ways that you can check things that happened or if they happened on the network, for example, you can check the balance of an address, uh, the last block that was mined, the hash of it, uh, what's going on with another contract, but you cannot do things like check the value of what's on an internet page, and you can actually not generate a random number. So gambling contracts are impossible um, because of the bad miner problem. So a miner on the network can do the following. If you have a contract which is using the only way to get randomness on the network, which is the hash of the current block, a miner can do mining and submit the current block along with his uh, bet. So he'll know what the hash of the block is as he's betting. So it means Ethereum cannot be used for gambling, which is one of the main misconceptions that people have. So what other distributed apps are possible on Ethereum? Um, you can do file storage. But... <laughs> I, it's not going to be competitive with centralized solutions. Now, for nerds, oh, it's so cool, it's decentralized. There's no company like Dropbox, there's no company like Google and Drive that can't take down my files. So yeah, that's kind of cool. But for the average user, they, it's no way to be competitive because it has to be decentralized stored across a lot of nodes. And every time you want to store a file on the network, you have to pay. Every interaction with Ethereum, you have to pay. That's something a lot of people are 
don't understand and they're not going to want to do it because you have either I have to pay a fraction of a cent to make my post or I can go to this other website and do it for free. So that's something to be aware of. I don't think the average person is going to want to pay for every post they have to make or every query they have to make against the network. Um, what else? So gambling is out of the question. File storage, very expensive. Um, 8chan right now, for example, has 2 terabytes of data that it serves. Uh, it also, you know, it store it serves to 100 terabytes a month. But the amount of active content is 2 terabytes. So, in a blockchain-like system, if it were to get that big, the blockchain would have to be at least 2 terabytes. And on the Ethereum network, that would cost an astronomical amount of money to store, much more than it would cost in a traditional kind of network. So whether I think a, an image board is possible on Ethereum, it's probably possible to make one, but it's impossible for it to get to HN scale or anywhere close because the only people that will be able to use it will have to already own Ethereum tokens. And for every, and for every post they make, they'll have to pay. So if you give the average person the choice between I have to pay to make a post or I can make a post for free, they won't pay. So what else could you do with the Ethereum network? Um, with every other kind of transaction that you would make, you still have to trust another party. So, for example, this whole Augur network they're talking about, where you're, it's a decentralized kind of, you're betting on the outcome of an event. Like, say you want to bet on next year's presidential race, and you bet, I don't know, 100 Ethereum tokens on uh, Donald Trump winning. So, it, you still have to trust the counterparty whoever is going to report the outcome of the transaction to the network. So it's no different than a centralized system because that guy can still screw you. Imagine that you're betting on a presidential race, but the Ethereum network is a closed circuit. The only way it's going to know who won the race is if the person that you designated in the so-called smart contract tells the network who won. So it comes down to it, and okay, Donald Trump wins. Donald Trump wins in 2016. But the person that you said in 2015, I give the person who owns the key 0x2a5 the right to say who wins and uh, how the money is going to be dispersed. So 0x2a5 voted on Hillary Clinton. And he's also playing, but of course he didn't tell you that. So it comes down to it, and... Trump won, but he does not have to be truthful. So he can just say to the contract, oh yeah, Trump won in real life, but he will write on the contract a lie, Hillary Clinton won. And then he will be the winner on his other account that he didn't tell you about. So there's counterparty risk, therefore it's not really a smart contract. It's no different than uh, a site like BitBet, which is run by uh, Mercia. Papa school, I think his name is pronounced, where you have to trust the person reporting the outcome of the bets. Uh, what else could you do with the Ethereum network? Not a whole lot. I heard that there's a... One of the things they write on their website is that you can very easily make altcoins. So imagine you're an artist. Now, this is really far-fetched. Imagine you're an artist and you want to mint your own currency, and then people can donate to you in your own currency. Well... It just sounds dumb to me. Um, if I was an artist and I wanted to get money, I would just accept actual money. Uh, I see no reason to mint a ton of currencies. That's a, the most. The majority of crypto coins that are out there don't even survive a month. So, <laughs> what else? I, I every thing that people have told me that can be done with the Ethereum network is so far-fetched to me um, that I really think people are being sold a lie 
And this is preying on the ideas guys, who they see a bunch of words like decentralized and paradigm shift. And it just goes on in their head, oh, you know, um, this is going to change the world. Well, I don't know if you guys ever saw Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It's a famous TV movie in the U.S. Maybe it was in theaters. I just know they put it on TV a lot. And in the beginning, there's a scene where the father, he's like this great inventor, and he has a machine with like a hundred moving parts, and all it does is make toast. Well, that's really cool, but that's what the Ethereum network is. It's a machine with hundreds of moving parts, and it does something that here in the Philippines, you could pay somebody 5,000 pesos a month, and every morning they would make your toast and do your laundry and clean up around the house, and it would cost you a lot less money than the R&D for the machine and <laughs> the expenses of keeping it running and trying to maintain it. So, yep, uh, I'm not really too impressed with Ethereum at all. Um, if I got something wrong in this video, you're free to uh, try to correct me. Maybe I can see the light if there's any light to be seen. Uh, I did some calculations, which I will just show as a still at the end of this, how much it would cost to store a... I'm pretty sure, I don't know what the average free storage that these services like Dropbox and, uh, shoot, what's the other one? I think it's just called Box. I don't use any of them. I just have my own FTP, but it, I, I, they tend to give people a gigabyte free storage or more. But let's just say a gigabyte. How much would it cost to store a gigabyte on the Ethereum network versus what Dropbox is giving people for free. So I think that will surprise you. Um, have a nice day. If you did invest in Ethereum, uh, yeah. Sorry for your loss. One of the other common arguments I've heard from proponents in favor of Ethereum is that, well, at least they released a product. A lot of altcoins, they launch, and then they have a bunch of big ideas, ideas guying again. And at the end of the day, oh, no program was launched, and the so-called uh, foundation, or whatever it is, it's really just one guy with a computer, and he put up a thread up on Bitcoin Talk, and, you know, in a bunch of greedy people's minds, that's a foundation. Well, he decides he's not interested in producing the blockchain anymore because he sees it's a dumb idea, or it's going to take a lot to build, or it's just very complicated and the centralized solutions are better. So he just decides, all right, well, I'm not going to do this anymore. He just absconds with all the money from the foundation. And then, you know, all the bag holders are left high and dry, like Paycoin. So the developers strike me as not very well trained. Yes, they did release a product, but just because a product is released, doesn't mean it's good and doesn't mean it will be successful on the market. So congratulations, they are not all out scammers like 50%, maybe more of altcoin launches. Uh, but still, the product that was launched is very shoddy in its execution. I saw recently that there's a bug in the uh, address transaction thing where all addresses on the Ethereum network are just basically a hex address. 0xAAA71, whatever. And I don't remember how long the number is. I think it's a 32-byte number. It might be a 64-byte number. I can't remember. But the, the problem with that is <laughs> they did not use simple checksumming. So currently... The Ethereum network is really small. It's just basically a group of Redditors and other people that uh, bet on these kind of altcoins to try to make money and swindle others. Have, you know, are just betting on the Ethereum network. And, and already they have sent over $8,000 to the address 0x000 until the end, you know, until the length of the number, so all zeros. And this came out, it was an accident in the address parser because there was a space in the beginning of the address. So this was patched, but the developer that patched it, he decided, well, you know, checksums are for fiat dummies. 
we don't need to use that in our network. So he made it so that the patch only checks if it's the right length and if it has valid digits, A through F and 0 through 9. So the problem with this is if you copy wrong or if you copy your address from paper, for example, and you get any digit wrong, you are sending your money into a black hole because the private key is not known. Um, the Bitcoin network, on the other hand, uses a base 58 encoded number that has multiple checksums in it. So let's take this uh, example, the 8chan public key. If you accidentally copied this from paper or some weird event happened and you stored it on your hard drive, but your hard drive accidentally turned the two into a three, I don't know how that could happen, but data corruption is possible. I think they said that databases uh, get 0.1% corrupt every year or something. I don't know how true that is, but so you go to send this. Now, Bitcoin is smart. There's a checksum. If you change the the last part, U32C into U33C, that's not a valid public key anymore. It won't send. Now, the Ethereum network, however, let's say you have this example, Ethereum key, which is, you know, 0x and at the end there's CFE5. Well, if you change that CFE5 to a CFC5, that will work. It will still send your money. Now, <laughs> the so-called checksum Lund algorithm has been around since the 1950s, but I guess these guys never heard of it. <laughs> and, um, so, you know, a developer incompetence like this does not bode well for the coin because people have paid millions of dollars for these so-called world-class developers that cannot even implement a barcode checksum. So, you know, buyer beware. Uh, I would not send any money unless I, like, quadruple checked it with some, <laughs> you know, uh, hashing algorithms because it, just total incompetence here. And it was brought up on their subreddit. Excuse me, that's the only way they communicate with users on a subreddit. And the developer basically said, oh, sorry for your loss, but it's your fault. You know, we don't have to use checksums because we're smart enough that we just never make mistakes. Um, yeah, so that's just one example out of the many of <laughs> the problems that there is in the Ethereum launch. Will they ever add checksums? I sure hope so. But even if they do, the fact that they allowed this mistake to remain and even tried to say it wasn't really a problem when it was found out does not bode well for their client.